Joining us now to provide an update on the local COVID response is the director of Santa Barbara County Public Health. With her weekly segment here joining us is Vondo Reynoso. We want to get the very latest on testing, schools reopening, sports starting again, and of course vaccines. So let's start right there. This new Johnson & Johnson single shot vaccine uh, being called the game changer. Have we seen the J&J &J shot yet here uh, in Santa Barbara County? Yes, so we received notice that we will be in receipt of vaccines this week, and we are thrilled that uh, next week we will be able to have 3,800 doses of the Janssen vaccine here in Santa Barbara County. Fantastic news. So we're going to get 3,800 doses by next week of the Johnson & Johnson shot. And do you know where those will go when we get them, or is that still to be decided? It's still to be decided. We just received the allocation notice um, yesterday afternoon, so we are working on allocating it to our various vaccine distribution sites uh, throughout the county. Oh, that's great. That's very exciting. All right, now to schools reopening, and it's pretty obvious the teachers want to be vaccinated before they are more comfortable to get back into the classroom, and that's certainly a priority for school districts and for teachers unions. Um, what's the latest update there on getting teachers their vaccines? You know, we are also concerned and very supportive of the uh, teachers. So we have been working with our school superintendents to ensure that there is a smooth uh, uh, vaccine distribution. So right now, the priority groups have been determined by the school superintendents, uh, staff serving students uh, who are unable to wear masks who are medically fragile or require support that does not uh, and doesn't allow physical distancing. They're being prioritized right now. And then um, staff with significant contact with others um, in person and or close proximity to others and mixing across multiple stable groups and or locations. Those are the top two priority groups that we are uh, working to vaccinate right now. So uh, this week, our uh, partner, Lompoc, Valley Medical Center will be vaccinating starting this evening uh, the first priority groups and moving on to the second priority groups. We anticipate that other hospital partners and healthcare partners will be offering vaccinations uh, next week. Um, and again, appointments for these clinics are being coordinated with school superintendents. It seems a little confusing. I know we've talked to some teachers on stories with them this week that there's a tiered system within the tiered system within the color coded system of them getting their sure. vaccine. Um, why not just open it up to anybody who works at a school, a teacher and just say, you know what, if you can, uh, this is your day. This school is going to be completely vaccinated by next Thursday. And, and why not do it that way? Sure, that would make it a lot simpler uh, for us as well. But you know, we are concerned that we want, because vaccines are limited right now, we still don't have enough for everyone who wants one. So we have to prioritize the most vulnerable staff um, getting the vaccine first. And so that is why the, uh, uh, the school superintendents have proposed um, the, the four tiers, the four priority sure. system within education. We want to make sure that staff are most vulnerable are getting uh, vaccinated first and that it's equitable across our county. We want to make sure that North uh, County staff, South County staff, Mid County staff are getting equal access to vaccinations. And as we talk about schools opening up, there's also school sports that are going to be allowed in some areas to start up once again. Uh, kind of give us the latest rundown of that. I know kids have been waiting a long time to start playing sports again. Absolutely. So that is the great news uh, for the week that because our case rate dropped below 14 cases per 100,000, that there are some sports that can resume um, immediately. And, uh, you know, we acknowledge that sports play a critical role in the mental and physical health of our community youth, as well as for the adults. So we're super excited to work with the schools um, to ensure that outdoor high contact sports, such as basketball, football, hockey, uh, rugby, rowing, soccer and water polo can resume in a safe manner. And so we have been working with uh, schools uh, athletic directors to make sure that the updated state guidance is being followed. So that means uh, face coverings uh, by observers and coaches, 
uh, distancing between non-household members and limitations on spectators, as well as uh, uh, testing. Uh, and let's talk about testing. Uh, we've had a new mobile clinic that ended up in Carpinteria this week, which is a place I don't believe had had a, their own testing site before. Um, it's still so important for people to go get tested, right? And that's really going to get us to the next tier. Absolutely. Testing is more important now than ever. Um, as you know, the state uh, currently ranks Santa Barbara County in the most restrictive purple tier. And in order for us to move to the less restrictive red tier, one of the things that we have to do is increase our COVID-19 uh, testing. Uh, so as cases decrease, testing positivity decreases, and we can then move to the less restrictive tier. And I think that uh, some may think that testing is not important now that we have the vaccine um, in our community. However, it will take many months to vaccinate our entire community. So it is critical that uh, we all uh, seize upon the opportunity to get tested um, because testing will ensure safety practice um, as uh, along with the uh, face coverings and physical uh, distancing. So I wanna encourage community members um, to get tested, especially um, if you are uh, 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 engaged in uh, activities and you're not sure about your exposure. Testing is free. It's available throughout our county. Vando Reynoso, uh, the director of Santa Barbara County Public Health, thank you so much for joining us again this week and answering some of the questions that uh, we get from community members and doing stories and just out in the community. Uh, it's a good resource to be able to, to chat with you and uh, give it a little more than just, you know, a minute 30 or a soundbite here to uh, explain some things. We appreciate it. Great. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Take care.